Um, hello everybody, uh, today, uh, I will let you know that there's a Java version or mobile version of Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy 2. Uh, I actually heard uh, this quite a long time ago, but, well, anyway. Let's take a look. Okay, let's try uh, the first Final Fantasy first. Uh, to let you know, uh, some f I can't. I mean, there's no other way. Uh, Getting this game, except downloading illegally from the internet. Well, at least that for me. So I downloaded it, and most of the version out there doesn't support music and sound effect play together. So I'll hear music. Let's just slow to any. Uh, this Java board is quite similar uh, to the NES version with some graphics from the Game Boy Advance version or the worst one version. It's basically the same, but uh, this version uh, is not uh, the easy mode because uh, the MP system and the money, the price, all is uh, like the hard version of PlayStation 1 and uh, like the N Nintendo version. It's a bit difficult. Anyway, let's check out the next Final Fantasy 2. Exit, yes. Uh, for your information, I also downloaded the, this game from the internet. I'm really sorry, but that's the only way I can get this game. Alright. Oh yeah, uh, the options uh, give us option to play music and sound effect, but in my phone that doesn't work. If uh, the, mu the music playing and suddenly sound effect pop up, the music will stop playing. And that's really annoying. So I'll go with music again. The transition is a bit slow. Yeah, no. Fire is the best black magic early on.
The mobile version is actually based on the next version too. So wait, let's wait. Go back. Go back. Wrong place, huh? Just like Paul. The Paul is the old Paul in the I think Warner's one and uh, Ness version looks like a ninja. But overall, I think uh, the Final Fantasy 1 and 2 uh, developed, developed for, uh, I mean, J, JF phones, or you could call a uh, feature phones, uh, it's really, really good. Well, not as good as the... Uh, smartphone version maybe but it's good enough for me thank you for watching if you like it uh, please press like button duh. and thank you for watching really Hi, I'm David Simmons, and this is a review of the Grandstream GXV3275 Android Desk Phone. Uh, this is a fully digital phone. You can't use it with a regular POTS line. You do need a VoIP service or an IP PBX to use it. It runs Android, so it's a lot like having an Android tablet with a handset and stand. This phone was released just about a week ago, and I noticed there weren't many useful, informative reviews. Uh, the few reviews I found were from people who were wanting to sell me a phone and didn't go into great detail or show the phone in action. I don't sell phones, so we're going to take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. The phone itself comes with a base unit, a handset, a wall mount, an ethernet cord, a handset cord, a power adapter, a cleaning cloth for the screen, and various documentation, including, I kid you not, your very own printed copy of the GNU General Public License. The build quality is pretty decent for what it is. It does have a little bit of the cheap plastic feel like everything else these days you get from companies not named after fruit. I do find that the handset cradle is a bit awkward. There's not quite enough clearance uh, below the handset for the wire, so sometimes, sometimes it's hard to get the handset back into the cradle properly. I do have one dead pixel on the, uh, the LCD here, but I guess I can live with that. So when you plug the phone in here, it boots up in about one minute and seven seconds. One of the most important features of this fine device is the ability to make phone calls. So let's check that out. Whenever you lift the, the handset, the phone immediately switches to the phone app. You know, you put it back and it hangs up, switches back to the, the, the old app. Uh, you can also easily make calls with the speakerphone, just hitting the phone icon here. You hear the dial tone. Uh, we can make a sample phone call here. Uh, one nice feature here is the option to record phone calls, which seems to work quite well, and, and it works without beeping the party on the other end. So, say more, start recording, and we're recording the call. Mostly clear, low around 73. Tomorrow, 30% chance of thunderstorms, high around 91. Main menu, for weather, press 1 now. For uh, the speakerphone seems to be pretty good. Uh, the handset it has very good quality. Unfortunately, it's so good that the other party can hear me breathing unless I consciously move the microphone about an inch away from my mouth. So keep that in mind should you get one of these phones. There's also support for a Bluetooth headset and it uh, works about like you would expect. One of the compelling features of this phone is that it's actually an Android tablet in addition to being a simple desk phone. The hardware isn't as powerful as a modern Android phone or tablet, nor is the software quite as polished. Uh, don't buy one of these expecting it to be as slick as a Nexus. It runs a customized version of Android 4.2 and comes with an app called GS Market here uh, for downloading more apps from Grandstream. And as you can see, one of the apps you can download is the 
actual Google Play app, and when you download that, then you can download everything else from, from Google. Um, you can see that over here, yep, Play Store. Google is actually very protective of their Google Play suite of apps and usually require devices to meet certain standards before license is granted, so I am kind of surprised to see Google Play available as a download from Grandstream. So, let's see how Google Hangouts works here. Yeah, start a video call with myself. Oh, and there you can see me from the other end of the Hangout. Uh, it mostly works like you would expect, but your your video, as seen by the other party, is pretty bad and a bit laggy. It's a it's a small, cheap camera, uh, and the device does seem a touch underpowered for keeping up with the uh, the video encoding. Um, I noticed a bit of flakiness when trying to enable uh, a Bluetooth headset um, earlier. When, you, when I switched over to uh, Bluetooth, the incoming audio became garbled. And then I switched back to speaker, and the incoming audio fixed itself, but played through the Bluetooth headset. You can imagine that. So, uh, oh, also, whatever you do, don't lift the the handset to talk in Hangouts, because the moment you do that, you're not going to be able to talk in Hangouts. It's going to go to the phone app, as such, and you'll have to go back to the Hangouts without being able to talk on the on the handset. Um, I've come to the conclusion this phone isn't really meant to run arbitrary Android communication apps very well. If, if you just stick to the core features of the phone, you'll probably be okay. So how much power does this use when you have it plugged in all day? Uh, I put a kilowatt meter on it and I found that uh, when the screen's turned off, when it's in sleep, uh, it uses about 3.1 watts. Uh, when the screen is on, it uses 6.0 watts. And if you have the fancy screensaver with the photo animation going, it'll actually use up to 7.2 watts. Uh, I have noticed a few other problems with the phone. Uh, yesterday, after a call, I, the phone wasn't able to go back to sleep, as if some sort of screen wake lock was in effect. Uh, so when, when I noticed this a few hours later, I lifted the handset, put it back, and then the phone was able to go to sleep again. Uh, the screen seems to pick up fingerprints very easily. I guess that's why they provided the cleaning cloth. All in all, I like the phone and think it will be a great replacement for the dumb phone that I have been using. I just can't expect it to be a slick Nexus-style Android super phone. Well, I hope this review was useful and thanks for watching.